tootin' rootin' tootin' tootin' rootin' tootin' rootin' tootin' Hi, listener, and welcome back to another episode of Coco and Dolts. I'm already down on this episode because listener Coco was shaking her head at me as I was doing the intro music. I think we should start over. I'm not Coco. And I'm not Dolph. We are doing real reviews. We're real people. And Coco, what are we doing in this episode today? In this episode, we are doing the brand new Netflix original docu, not really a docu-series. It's a limited series based on the true story of Charles Sobrage, who was apparently known as the Serpent. That is the name of the limited series, The Serpent. Charles Sobrage was a notorious serial killer in Asia during the 70s, apparently completely undetected until one dogged Dutch diplomat. Oh, (laughs) how you like that alliteration? Alliteration. Yeah. Early in the podcast. (laughs) We were, uh, I was an English major listener, so I'm down with the alliteration. Dogged Dutch diplomat Knippenberg. Uh, came across the case of a couple of dead Dutch tourists in Bangkok. That's where he was stationed in the 70s, and kind of nobody was taking the case seriously. So he investigated and uncovered this web of crime that Charles Sobrage, a.k.a. Alan Gautier, a.k.a. the Serpent, committed with his girlfriend, his Quebecois girlfriend, and an Indian sidekick. And so this is an eight episode series. Each episode is an hour long, all about the serpent's reign of terror in Bangkok and Nepal and India and Hong Kong and other places and kind of the investigation into him and then how he evaded capture for so long and then how he was eventually sort of brought to justice. Mm -hmm. So, got anything to add to the summary, Dalton? No, I mean, you always do the great summaries, Coco, and that one was just another example of greatness. I know you're I just think. trying to get some action. I uh, So, this was, uh, like Coco said, eight episodes, eight hours of TV. We just watched that, listener. And we pounded out eight hours in just under 24 hours, actually. Well, and we binge watched it so you don't have to. <laughs> So tell us what you think about this. <laughs> so uh, Coco hit all the high spots, and uh, there's a lot of uh, nefarious, funny business in there. The um, the diplomat is constantly frustrated at the lack of attention that the, these cases are being paid. Um, he is frustrated at many number of things. Yeah. and He's uh, wound pretty tight. He's wound pretty tight. And I didn't think the Dutch were wound tight people. So this is breaking <laughs> stereotypes for me. They got all that pot. so well, Right. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I don't know. I mean, I thought they and were kind of loose. Bangkok. Right. So. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, in the 70s. Right. So this Netflix uh, uh, special is, uh, to me, sort of evidence of we are getting toward the bottom of the pandemic barrel because this is being touted and pushed ahead and, and uh, lauded uh, on Netflix. And I just think it's it's not something we would be paying attention to. I think in regular times when regular productions were going ahead, it's just one of those foreign production so i think you'd it's be, worth in other words you'd be in the theaters watching godzilla versus kong this weekend and not watching an eight episode netflix series about a south asian serial killer so the story is compelling the story <laughs> is really really compelling yeah that it is so there's this guy like coco said who's you know got nefarious he's a dr- gem dealer for some yeah. ra- random reason not a drug dealer not an arms dealer but a gem dealer in southeast asia and manages to steal passports from people and then go abroad with these stolen gems and and fence them and get big money. Apparently a master passport forger because master, the yes. a, American diplomat who was called in to inspect the forged American passport was like, well, if it's fake, it's really good. I can't tell it's not real. So. And so it's, it's worth saying as well that this is an international production. So there's lots of uh, cooks in this kitchen. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, is filmed in Thailand. Uh, a lot of Thai officials involved. A lot of Thai actors. Uh, English, Australian, Pakistan, India, American. Maybe I'm not quite sure how legitimate that American guy was. 
Um, but there's all sorts of uh, entities involved here. And you can tell usually what happens with these kinds of productions where it's like, okay, Netflix is having a brainstorming meeting. It's like, let's get something and involve everybody who's got a Netflix uh, account and let's get them involved. (laughs) <laughs> like, let's get everybody in the Netflix global empire involved with this particular one, and it'll be win-win, and everybody will play it. And because there's French on there, there's like there's a lot of different languages, a lot of different subtitles. They even managed to squeeze in the fact that the one of the co-conspirators is a Canadian, so you've got that market covered. And it was really funny, too, because there was one Canadian diplomat mm-hmm. who was kind of an a-hole. Right. And uh, Knippenberg let him have it. And I'm like, wow, you don't usually see Canadians being villainized. <laughs> he, you was, know? he was coming in. He was sort of like just the, almost the same as the American guy coming in. There. Right. I was like, don't... wait a minute. If the Canadian diplomat's coming in, he's going, how can I help you, eh? <laughs> right. Like, totally. I, you know, I think I have a pretty good <laughs> sense of how this would go. He'd be like, oh, geez. Is that, oh, let's help you. Right. The Canadians aren't usually the ones who are the bad guys or the so, stonewallers yeah, yeah so that so. was really that was like what yeah that was so that was an unrealistic moment and i think what we should we should address the elephant in the room coco is the acting was horrific it totally was um i would especially like to give a shout out to ellie bamber as angela knippenberg mm-hmm. and billy howell as herman knippenberg mm-hmm, as mm-hmm. Two terrible actors. So they're Razzie Worth, are they? Yes, they were really so. And she the, played a German in this one. Yeah, so there's so, another perhaps Netflix market that's involved. So the first 10 to 15 minutes of the first episode, I was like, oh, they're actually trying to make this look as though it were actually filmed in the 70s. Mm-hmm. It's kind of got that not HD mm-hmm. gritty feel to it. Yep. And the music. Yeah, I was really into it. And mm-hmm. then suddenly... And some of the footage was, looked like it was originally yeah. from Southeast Asia in the 70s. And then suddenly, after about 15 minutes, the Knippenberg guy appears. And it was just like the record scratch. Like, <laughs> like it just... <laughs> Any time the German lady and the Dutch guy were on screen, it was just a bad soap opera. And yeah. soap operas usually aren't master classes in thespianism anyways, mm-hmm. but those two were especially bad. So I they f- just took me straight out of it. I felt bad because there's so much potential here. The production value was really high. So we not only had the really good grainy 70s right. video that went along with, you know, the Bangkok in the 70s. That was a really cool shot. They had Hong Kong in the 70s, I believe, like some real right. authentic and, like, footage. Delhi and Mumbai. Yeah, yeah. like all these places they went to, they had authentic, like, just B-roll, but uh, obviously the actors are not walking there or not uh, CGI'd onto a screen with that in the background. It was actually legit footage. It was really good. Um, And the the wardrobes are good. Yeah. The... uh, the haircuts were authentic. Like I believed all that stuff. I believed everything around it. The soundtrack was good. Not only the, uh, the, the soundtrack mu- was amazing. Not only the music that we, you know, you're used to hearing these kinds of seventies movies, but also I thought the original music in the soundtrack was really good too. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of this stuff was, and the story is bang on cool. Awesome for this kind of thing As again, we want to reiterate, you know, people's deaths are not right. entertaining mm-hmm. in any way, shape or form, but retelling a story like this you think you've got all sorts of potential. And the elevator pitch for this this series, uh, I imagine, was was green-lighted immediately by mm-hmm. Netflix, especially if they're going to involve every Netflix market in the production of it. Right. Um, but the but the acting just it just like you said, Coco, just took me right out of it. Like there were some moments where I was just like I was laughing when I was, shouldn't have been laughing. <laughs> right, totally. And I was I was stunned, and I was like, wait a minute, what what does that facial expression mean? Shouldn't he be reacting this way instead? And it just and you did mention uh, the production values, which you know, were great. Like the wardrobe was great, the hair was great, but there were a few times when somebody's lips weren't moving, but <laughs> they were saying lines of dialogue. Right, and that's like an that, editing thing. Yeah, right? that happened several times. And You're I was right. just like, wait a minute. she You you could totally tell, too, that somebody spoke it in a booth. Right, and it then was they, dubbed. It was dubbed. So that was, that was a, a miss. Yeah, there was a couple of those editing uh, misses for sure. Um, and, and there were some things that happened like this is, so this is eight hours and this yeah. is, this, this is, is not legit eight hours. It's not 40 minute episodes. I, I, that's what they I was just going to say. These are not one of those, uh, you know, leave 40 minutes and then leave 20 minutes for potential commercials in case mm-hmm. it goes on commercial TV or whatever. Like this is 58 minutes at least of yeah. solid I think video. the shortest one was 55. Yeah. And, and no, uh, 
it didn't seem like there was any uh, thought to shortening it. A lot there was a lot of redundancy. I know that they did it on purpose. It was a, it was a, an effect that they used, but they used some of the same footage over and over again. And eventually, it got to be just kind of tiresome. And I was like, this really could have been shorter. <laughs> I know we 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 reached the halfway point and we were you know over the crest of the horizon. And we could see it. Um, and we were looking at it. It's like, man, the episodes five and six were, that was the longest episodes I think I've ever seen in my life. It's like, oh, we're almost there, but we're not really almost there. It's still, we still got two more, three more episodes. So it just, it was just too bad. It's, uh, it, I think we wanted, we both wanted to like this. Yeah. The trailer didn't dazzle me, but I thought, well, it's trending on Netflix. Let's watch it and see what the, all the fuss is about. And I'm, I wish that we had not. <laughs> Aww. What else did you thought you think, uh, Coco? I mean, it was well, nice that's... spending time on the couch with yeah. you, you know, beside you <laughs> in your company, but. So I actually thought they did a really good job of building tension mm -hmm. throughout um especially in it was either the third or the fourth episode i believe it was a, it was the third episode where a would-be mm -hmm. victim managed to escape yeah he managed to steal his passport back and flee thailand back to Dominique. france yeah and the last like 15 or 20 minutes of that episode where he was stealing his passport um, they were finding a different tourist visa because his is, had expired. He's at the airport. Uh, Charles is coming back from Hong Kong that day. So are they going to run into each other at the airport? And then Charles is going to take him back and like kill him. Mm -hmm. Like I've never wanted somebody to escape in a movie more than <laughs> I've wanted Dominique to escape. And so I, and that kind of started a trend. Like after that, each episode I thought did a really good job of building tension a lot, mm -hmm. but it was... Yeah, the episodes, they, they did seem long. Like, I think they probably could have all been, like, about 10 to 15 minutes shorter. Mm -hmm. I didn't mind some of the redundant material because I actually did like that they showed scenes from different characters' perspectives. Mm -hmm. So you'd yeah, see yeah. a scene from one character's perspective, and then later in the episode, you'd see that same scene from a different character's perspective. So I actually kind of liked that. Mm -hmm. um, you could kind of see, you know, how different people were reacting to things and, like, what happened immediately before and after or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed that. Um, and when you say perspective, though, like it was the same footage. Yeah, it was the same footage. It wasn't footage. like you were seeing it from that person's eyes or, or perspective viewpoint. It was no, it was the same footage. But like, say, the first character you'd see, they would go into an apartment and say, hey, Charles, blah, blah, blah. And Charles would say, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And the first character would say, okay, great. And then leave the apartment and you would follow that character for the rest mm -hmm, of the day. But mm -hmm. then later in the episode, you'd see that same scene. But then when the first character left, you'd stay in the apartment with Charles. And then you'd hear the conversation that Charles had with Monique and AJ, his Indian sidekick after that. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah so I, um, I yeah, like that. was good. Yeah. yeah I like yeah. that. I, I felt like I that agree. kind of brought like more kind of balance to it and made mm -hmm. it a little bit more well-rounded. Um, the writing though, I thought was not especially fantastic. I know Dolph will throw me down and punch me in the face for saying this because what? adults uh, I'm not a violent person at all because <laughs> you're Canadian right um, well geez how can I help it because <laughs> adults enjoyed some of the speeches I thought some of the speechifying was a little cheesy like where Charles was telling AJ that a white girl has colonized him by sleeping with him. And I was like rolling my eyes. I was like, oh, is it five o'clock? Can I drink yet? Like, oh. See, I, I like that particular speech because I thought it was evidence of how manipulative he, he oh, could yeah. be. Like uh -huh. he, that was the manipulation in action. Mm -hmm. And I like that part of it. I will agree that the dialogue was uh, uneven. Yeah. It was inconsistent. I think mm -hmm. you could say overall this was inconsistent. Like yeah. it had some really interesting moments but the but the bad moments just brought it all the way down like yeah. it just it was like a it was like a spanish soap opera i mean it was just up <laughs> and down and up and down it just it just didn't seem to be very uh evenly written or directed yeah. or acted and especially the character of monique um she you know one minute she's 100 percent in love with charles and the next minute she's thinking about turning him into the cops and she just Dalton and I were talking about this in between episodes and she was just a very inconsistent character. Mm -hmm. Like her characterization was not consistent from minute to minute, let alone episode to right. episode. So that was kind of, you know, in the beginning, 
you can see how she got sucked in. And I was like, oh, man, she was just as much a victim as everybody else. But then later in that episode, like she's helping him drug people and stuff. And I'm like, okay, so she's not really that much of a victim. And then she's all like, I'm not a criminal. And I'm like, yeah, you are, girl. (laughs) You are a criminal, actually. Well, and I think that the intention there was a show her inner conflict and she was conflicted and she was, she wanted to be a good person and yet she was wrapped up in the, in the, in the talons of this Svengali blah, blah, blah. Uh, except it just didn't happen in a, it happened too abruptly in some ways and it happened inconsistently. And I, I know life is messy and, yeah. you know, you can be conflicted and, and do things that are counter to your character. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it just, in this kind of production, it just seemed really odd because you have a lot of time to get to know these people. Right. So it didn't, it didn't, we didn't have to have these instant moments where she's like, all of a sudden, Hey, I'm helping. Hey, I'm not helping. Oh, right. what am I going to do? Yes. Mm-hmm. I know what I'm going to do. And she, and the entries in her diary about Monique, who is the character she, adapted and then Marie which was a real name right. that wasn't really used consistently that mm-hmm. would have explained some of the conflict so I, I just I I really I really wanted to like it and I think on paper it probably would have been pretty good it would have mm-hmm. been a, a decent script um, but it just not uh, I just wish we hadn't watched it yeah we watched the first two episodes yesterday when it premiered and after the second one, I had to go to bed and Daltz was just like, so what do you think so far? And I was like, oh man, it's really bad. And he was like, oh, thank God. I thought you liked it. And I was so like nervous. And I was like, no, this is really terrible. But I think it rebounded as the mm-hmm. episodes went on. Mm-hmm. But I think that's just because of the story, not because... The acting didn't get better. No, the acting did not get better. Although I will shout out, uh, give a shout out to Mathilde Warnier who played Nadine, she was really good. She was Mm -hmm. a neighbor of Charles who helped Dominique escape and helped uh, the Thai cops raid the apartment. So she did a good job, but... Yeah, I, uh, I agree. I think that... So listener, we... As you probably know, Coco and I have different tastes in movies. Yes. And so sometimes... But sometimes we cross over, like the, the diagram with the two circles, you know? Right. The <laughs> Venn diagram or yeah. whatever it is. Like sometimes we cross over and we, we really like some... We both really like something. And so I'm always sitting on the couch going... Oh, I don't want to be hating everything we watch. <laughs> like I don't want to be. But like, I know you do. That's always like raining down on Coco's superhero parade. But I, I was watching this as like, oh, I, <laughs> I wonder what she thinks because I think this is terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was really relieved. Mm-hmm. I knew I wasn't going to be sleeping on the couch last night when we both agreed that it was. It started off really horribly, and the acting was just was. You could see the acting, yeah, which is always a bad thing. But I, I agree. I think it rallied a little bit, mm-hmm. and we watched the whole thing, so yeah. it couldn't have been awful. Although, to be fair, we watched the whole thing because we were like, this is so bad that this podcast episode is going to be great because we're going to be just nonstop ripping on it. And I don't feel like we've actually been nonstop ripping on it. This is for you, listener. We do it all for you. <laughs> in a beautiful sunny day here in the Northeast, and we sat inside all day and watched horrible TV for we you. We did, yeah. So what uh, grade would you give? The serpent. The serpent. I would give it probably a five out of ten. Wow, you gave Godzilla versus Kong a six out of ten, and you seemed like you liked that a lot better. Yeah, I, w- I would say five. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, w- out of twenty six letters, Coco, and then <laughs> shades of those twenty six and Nuance. plus and minus. Yeah, plus and minus. What would you give uh, the serpent? I'd give it like a C to C minus. Wow. Yeah. It. Uh, if if it weren't for like I said like the tension building they were very very good at that throughout the episodes yeah. and then the story itself like you said was very gripping mm-hmm. um, those two things kind of saved it but everything else I mean it was it was just like a bad soap opera well and and, and we've said this before about other things too is it's driven by characters stupid decisions exactly like there are a lot of times where we were both looking at each other going just get in the taxi and go to the airport. Right. Like totally. it's, it's 1975. They're not right. going to trace your cell phone. Like just leave the country. And then Charles is having a conversation with his first wife at their wedding. And she's like, Oh, well, but I don't want to go to India. And yeah. I'm like, why didn't you talk about this before you got married? Like now you're trapped. Like what? Way to go. Yeah. What Way to you... broach that on the night of your wedding. <laughs> right. So let's go. Let's go to India. I... No, you know about that India thing? You know, I feel like probably French lady mags back in the 60s had you know like french cosmo probably did have lists of like 25 things to talk about before you get married and that's probably one of them you know? <laughs> so like when coco and i are leaving for canada and she's gonna be like you know 
I, after 27 years together, I don't think we're, I, I don't really want to go to Canada. Are you sure you really want to go to Canada? Like, I know that's all you've talked about since we met, but. I don't really, really? like maple syrup. Did I tell you that? Yeah. What? This is, this is. This is heartbreaking news. <laughs> you know, I'm vegan, so I can't eat the poutine, right? And back bacon is not a thing to me. <laughs> right. It's like, what? But love them Mounties. Oh, well, well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, C to C minus. So, uh, if you have other choices, listener, I'd say make those choices. Yeah. You know, we're going to probably look at some other movies that are hot this weekend. So maybe a movie is a better investment of your time than eight hours of this thing. Yeah, this is definitely one. If you're going to watch it, you don't have to watch it now. You can right. you can watch other stuff that's on your watch list and then get to this later. Yeah, if you're you know just watching the hot stuff so you can talk about it online or with your friends if you still have some, um, this is not the one. <laughs> this, even though it's trending on, on Netflix and it's the hot property, I think sometimes those... Numbers get cooked a little bit, and uh, they push things out that they want to say is hot. Because who's really watching an eight-hour debacle like this? Well, I mean, if they weren't, Netflix wouldn't throw a lot of money at it. Yeah, but I think they're throwing some some heft behind the marketing and saying, "Oh yeah, it's it's trending." Well, and Netflix clearly has a lot of money to throw around because they just spent four hundred and fifty million dollars on like two freaking Knives Out sequels, <laughs> which Knives Out didn't need a sequel. Netflix, right? With Daniel Craig inexplicably with some sort of Southern accent, like right? What is- some like hammy, over the top Southern accent. I love Daniel Craig, but no, and it, like it's the same accent he had in Logan and Lucky, I think. So, oh, like, I didn't watch. Why that. are you? Why are you playing that same card? I mean, it was great in Logan Lucky, but. But why in Knives Out? Anyway, we digress. So, yeah. So before we go too far off the rails, anything else to add? No, I'd say pass on this one, listener. I'd say try something else or maybe watch you know, like uh, Love It or List It or, or Grand <laughs> Marriage Design. or Mortgage. Marriage or Mortgage, yes. Yeah. <laughs> which we also watched, which was a much more entertaining watch. Let me, let me put it that way. Pop culture, empty calories. So actually, we were talking about marriage or mortgage, and we, we were joking around saying it was marriage, marriage or, or murder. murder. <laughs> so actually, we just watched Marriage or Murder. Marriage or Murder. Toads. All right. So thanks for putting up with us, uh, listener. We really appreciate it. We're out of here uh, for another week on the uh, podcast. I'm not Coco. And I'm not Dogs. <laughs>